Good evening and welcome to tonight's roundtable. I'm Michael Witch and tonight we're going to be talking about anxiety. Who's anxious these days and what are you anxious about? Is it normal to be anxious? Uh, when can it get in the way and get in the way of your life and what you want to do? And uh, we'll answer those questions and hopefully your questions because this is an interactive live segment and we'd like you to call or you can email or tweet uh, and the information on how to contact us will appear on your screen as we talk. And my guest tonight is Colette Lopain Capella and you are a psychotherapist and a Reiki master and your practice is in Larchmont. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Well, welcome. And I, I understand from you. you that appearing on television is not something you like. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> You've done it once before, and it didn't, it didn't, you didn't look quite good. I, uh, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. it, well, that's another story. But yes, um, <laughs> this is, everybody has their fears. And like mm -hmm. I said before, fears are false evidence appearing real. And this mm -hmm. is something that I'm very fearful about. But I practice what I preach, and I want people to be authentic. And so I'm going to put it out there. This is nerve wracking for me, but mm -hmm. anything that any hurdle, anything that you do that you're fearful of, you develop and grow from it. So uh, there's integrity and, and inner strength with that. So I'm here. Well, thank <laughs> and, and thank you for, for doing it. And uh, our audience is a wonderful audience. So uh, I'm, I'm very lucky. audience, let's show her. Um, talk to me about anxiety. Is it is it normal to be anxious from time to time in your life or are we really, should we really be talking about kind of an anxiety disorder where it really takes over and stops you from doing things? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, stress is somewhat normal in our lives, right? Stress is like, that gives us that drive or that push mm -hmm. to get things done. When stress is happening for a long period of time or a prolonged period of time, it can develop into anxiety. And anxiety is really, it's extremely difficult. I mean, it's these intense fears, mm -hmm. worries, nervousness, um, and it can extremely affect your life and the way you feel. Um, is, is it normal to feel stress from time to time? Yes, but extended periods of it and really this intense fear, fear, talking about fear, mm -hmm. um, or worry <laughs> or stress sure. can develop into a, an anxiety disorder. So yeah. it's not just worrying? Nope, it's not just worrying. More than that. There's more than that. There's physical components too. And we're going to we'll, we'll get to talk about that and some of the therapies that are applicable and and you could tell us something about your your practice in Larchmont uh, so that people who want to do something about their anxiety or maybe they know of someone I know of someone who is very close to me and has an anxiety about driving on a highway mm -hmm. with anyone uh, driving fast and she had two earlier accidents where she okay. was, uh, her car was hit and uh, by someone who, um, you know, turned poorly into her lane and it wasn't her fault at all. And that's what she says is the cause of this anxiety. But sure. it's very upsetting to her family because she will not go anywhere where she has to go on a highway. If you okay. can't get there on the back roads, she doesn't go. Doesn't happen. Yeah. yeah. And, that, and that's something that's common that I hear. Um, might be a fear of driving um, mm -hmm. because of something that happened and triggered this anxiety in reference to it. Um, and there's a lot of therapeutic approaches that can help with that, like exposure therapy, mm. um, building what, on tools and skills to kind of get through Exposure means putting you in, in a car with someone kind of. driving? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So your therapist might like set it up that we're going to take a ride. Um, there's a lot of prep before that. You're not just getting in the car with a therapist and they're like, let's go. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but there's going to be a lot of tools and skills and just kind of exposure and, and providing insight and reflection to why she feels like this. Why does she feel this way? Like, where does she feel it to kind of work through some of those mm -hmm. stressors so she feels more relaxed and calm and confident at, you know, at some point to be able to drive on a highway. Or Do these anxieties, are they common uh, among men as well as women? That's a great question. Yeah, so anxiety um, doesn't pick and choose. It can happen to males, it can happen to females. Um, there is research that shows that females actually uh, sort of uh, can get anxiety at an earlier age um, mm. because of the serotonin and the way it's processed in the brain. I don't know about that. I think anybody can be affected by anxiety. And what about children and teenagers? That's a great question, definitely. Children and teenagers can be affected by it as well. Um, Children, um, there could be... Yeah, I was just going to say, we had some teens on our roundtable a couple of weeks ago, and they were talking about their 
fear for safety in the schools. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a big topic now, too. I mean, that can ultimately be very traumatizing yeah. um, and make someone very fearful about even going to school. Mm -hmm. um, so I, there's no, there, there, it doesn't discriminate. It can really affect anyone. Um, children, you know, tend to have separation anxiety between 18 months and three years. That's mm. very common. Um, but no, it can, it can affect just about uh, me, anybody. <laughs> and um, the, uh, so it could be a result of some trauma or uh, a family experience, or is it chemically based? It could be a combination. Is it inherited? Possibly. It could be a combination. It could mm -hmm. be a chemical imbalance. It could be a traumatic event that's triggered this anxiety, like your friend, right? Mm -hmm. Going in the car, got in this accident, it's triggered the stressor. She probably didn't feel that before. Um, ultimately, it can kind of come out of nowhere sometimes, too. Maybe there's not an identified trigger of why this particular thing or a phobia mm -hmm. has occurred or is created. Okay. We'll get into more of our discussion about anxiety, and we'll be right back. Don't go away. Welcome back to our roundtable, and our guest, uh, Colette Lopain Capella, who is a psychotherapist and a Reiki practitioner in Larchmont. We're talking about anxiety tonight, and we've established that it is a normal condition, but under some circumstances, it can really be almost paralyzing sure. and can change lots in the way that you, how you approach life. Um, wh what anxiety can lead to what? S some more serious conditions? Sure. So anxiety can actually lead to um, medical conditions, but also mm -hmm. panic attacks um, where <laughs> Those are really intense if you've ever experienced one. Mm -hmm. um, it's really like there's no identified danger, but there's this immense fear. And there's so many physical components that this person is feeling physiologically because the anxiety has gotten to this extent. And, and it can definitely develop into something like that. Strange to say this, but we've got a question just about that. I'm reading it from a prompter. It says, how does anxiety, how do I know I'm having a panic attack? Oh. How does anxiety manifest? That's a really good question. Um, so if you're having a panic attack, mm -hmm. most likely you're feeling these physiological symptoms. So it could be shaking. It could be trembling. It could be heart palpitations. It could you're sweating be or... sweating, mm. uh, not being able to catch your breath. I mean, there's definitely like identifying factors that mm -hmm. something's not right. I mean, some people even confuse it as a heart attack or a stroke, right? And you went to the ER because um, I was having a heart attack and they're like, no, this was a panic attack. Hmm. It's, it's a very scary feeling. And what about a kind of a mental breakdown? Is that is that a result of prolonged sure. anxiety? Sure, so prolonged anxiety or, or even I guess the way you could look at it is panic attacks repeatedly could lead to mm -hmm. a mental breakdown or a nervous breakdown. Um, and that could be because of sleep deprivation, burnout, overload, just this induced stress that's been going on for such a long period of time mm -hmm. that someone's no longer able to function. I mean, their everyday tasks aren't even feasible or possible for them anymore. Can you give us a couple examples of some of the uh, anxiety disorders that sure. present in your practice? Sure. So um, I, I specialize in working with anxiety. It's really one of my areas of expertise. Um, and there is tons of anxiety disorders. It could, there could be generalized anxiety. Mm -hmm. um, there's phobias. There's um, social anxiety, talking on camera. <laughs> <laughs> um, or even at a group, even in a social group where you don't know people. Yeah. And yeah. You're, you're sort of, you, what's the behavior? You're kind of like I am, believe it or not, uh, in a corner. You're just sort of in a corner waiting for somebody to approach you and talk to you? Sure, or mm -hmm. you kind of shut down, or you have mm -hmm. these obsessive thoughts, mm -hmm. like you have this interaction with this person, and after the fact, you're like, what did I say? What did they say? Mm -hmm. Why do I feel this way? It can be very intense and, and almost like to the point where you don't want to be in these social situations anymore because it stresses you out so much, yeah. and that would be time to see a professional. Uh, we have another question that came in, and again, I'll read it from the camera. It says, uh, anger attacks after frustration. Is that real? I'm not sure what that viewer means. Do you understand uh, it? I'm not quite sure exactly what, what they're asking. Anger mm -hmm. attacks after frustration. Um, 
I guess if you if you're really frustrated with a situation, you get angry at the situation or at the person that might, uh, in your perception, be the cause of that. Sure. Um, well, I, I guess a, a good way to explain it is anger is kind of a secondary emotion. Mm -hmm. um, it's covering up for something deeper. It could mm. be the initial reaction and the primary reaction could be that it's sadness or stress or vulnerability and we work it out in anger. And that's because it's an easy, tangible reaction versus feeling that sadness or feeling that hurt. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times when someone's experiencing anger or they're angry, it's kind of like this hidden card for feeling sad or depressed mm. or maybe even anxiety. And then could, I think, in hand be the frustration component tied in there. Um, but frustration turning into anxiety, I guess I'm sort of trying to understand the question. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Turning into anger, I, I think is possible, but I think it's important to note that anger is a secondary emotion. It's not um, initially maybe what inher inherently you're mm -hmm. really feeling. Uh, you've obviously worked with lots of people in our community and outside of our community. I'd like you to share some of those uh, 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 techniques sure. that are available, and uh, we'll do that in our next segment, and it'll be coming up right after this. Don't go away. <laughs> Welcome back to our roundtable tonight. We're talking about anxiety with Colette Lopane Capella, who's a psychotherapist uh, and a Reiki practitioner in Larchmont. Mm -hmm. And I had asked her before about some of the ways to deal with anxiety. So is it a doctor's visit? Is it medication? Is it talk? Talk therapy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, um, so I'm a holistic therapist. So I try to connect the mind, body, and spirit. Mm -hmm. um, seeing a therapist is amazing, right? They're going to be able to talk to you about what the triggers are, what's going on, where is this coming from. A lot of times I tell people therapy could just be the aspect of talking, and that's therapeutic in itself because mm. healing is feeling. And so you're validating your feelings, you're expressing them. And then we build on tools and skills that you can utilize to cope with the concerns. Um, so I use a lot of mindfulness. Mm -hmm. um, grounding exercises, really helpful for anxiety. Um, progressive muscle relaxation. Um, positive self-talk, reassuring self-talk when you're in that moment to calm that stressor down. Mm -hmm. um, but then there's also, you know, a lot of times in conjunction when somebody's seeing a therapist, they're also seeing a psychiatrist for a medication regimen. Mm. So, you know, a med uh, psychiatrist may prescribe like an SSRI, an antidepressant, a PRRN, um, as well as the therapy. Um, so there's, there's definitely a lot of options and it's just what someone feels comfortable with. A lot of people do do both and some people say, you know, I'm not really into any medications. I want to go the holistic route mm -hmm. and I want to figure out what's going on and I want to build on my tool belt to have as much as I can as possible to overcome this. And so if someone is wondering about their own situation, uh, they call you? Mm -hmm. And is that typically the first contact as a phone conversation or do they come in in person? That's a great question. So I offer a free consultation phone call. Mm -hmm. um, so someone will call me and I'll say, do you have some time to talk? And we'll kind of talk about what's going on, how they're feeling. I just want to ensure that it's a good fit. I mean, because that's a big component of going into therapy, sure. that you're comfortable and confident with that person. Um, and then just like kind of ex explaining to them like how therapy works. Because some people are like, what is talk therapy? Yeah. Like, are you a shrink or are you, uh, you going to mess with my head? You know, that kind of thing. And <laughs> that all that old school stuff. And then that's not the case at all. Okay. We have a question from a viewer, uh, Victoria, uh, from New Rochelle. And the question is, what is the best advice when I, find my, when I found myself in hard situations and I feel very nervous and I feel that I am getting anxiety? What can I do at that specific moment? Sounds like a... Maybe a call for a, a breathing exercise. Exactly. So if you're feeling anxiety in that moment, you want to validate that feeling. You can sit with it. That's part of mindfulness. Mm -hmm. um, so you might do a grounding exercise or a mindfulness exercise where you're like literally using your five senses to focus on something else. Mm. Focus on the fact that you're okay. This is temporary. It's going to pass. Right? You're going to be all right. 
Um, part of it could maybe like view an object and like concentrate on that object and use your five senses to incorporate what's going on because that's centering. And you coach people in that. You teach oh, people yeah. how to do these things. Oh, yeah. There is okay. so, if I could tell you about all the tools and skills and ways that you can calm that anxiety, we would be here for hours. Okay. But there's really good stuff that's extremely helpful. But Victoria, I hope that answers your question. Yeah. And feel free to call with another. And we have a couple more minutes with our guest. So if you've got a question, now's the time to call. Um, I know people who uh, immediately go to Xanax mm -hmm. for calm. And they get a certain degree of calm, sure. but I, it's short-lived and it's not, yeah. it doesn't solve the problem because the next time the anxiety appears, it's another Xanax. Yeah. So therapy takes a little bit of a different, well, definitely a different approach. Um, sure. You're really getting down to like what internally is going on. Mm -hmm. Why do you feel this way? Is there a trigger? And the longevity of sort of releasing that anxiety or feeling whole from it is, is, mm -hmm. is better when you're doing that talk therapy versus like, I'm just going to take a pill. I mean, that's a short-term fix, right? That's a quick fix. Sure. Long-term effects of therapy are shown to really improve people's lives. Uh, you're a Reiki master. Yes. Talk about Reiki a little bit because uh, imagine some people have heard of it. Okay. Yeah. Some have never. Yeah. So I'm a, I have, um, I'm a Reiki practitioner um, in my office. It's absolutely amazing. It's um, the ancient art of, uh, Japanese art of energy healing. Mm -hmm. um, it's balancing the seven chakras. When a chakra is off, depending on which one it is, there could be emotional and uh, medical components that are sort of in line with that. And when you're able to sort of balance all the chakras, it's an amazing, it's a, a profound. Chakra, it, it, am I wrong in it saying that a chakra is an energy site? Yeah. Well, I guess in a sense, mm -hmm. you could then there's seven chakras throughout our body. So we have weight where we're, we're mm -hmm. kind of loaded up with them. We have the root chakra all the way up to the crown. Um, that and would be in the head. The, the crown, crown is here. The, okay. So this is the third eye right between the eyebrows. Okay. You're, yeah, you're into it. I've been exposed a little bit to Reiki. Yeah, I, I yeah. noticed. Mm -hmm. This is awesome. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, once it's a really profound thing. I mean, uh, it's a great experience. It's very balancing. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when people walk out of my office after doing a Reiki session, they're like, I'm floating out. Mm. I feel like this sense of calmness and serenity and peace. It's, it's, it's a it's I've also fantastic. heard people say that they, if they get a massage, that they feel a similar. Kind of similar. You don't do massage therapy no. in your office, but <laughs> it is another modality. Yeah, it is. I think it's probably mm -hmm. similar to that. And I think within my practice, I, I'm kind of like offering like both, right? So it's like mm -hmm. the talk therapy and like validating the feelings. Feeling mm -hmm. is healing. On the other side of it is like this holistic side, like what is going on with the body? What's going on with the chakras and how can we balance it mm -hmm. to feel whole? You have uh, uh, a website. Yes. Uh, do you want to mention that website? What's, what can people find when they go to that website? Sure. So my website is clopaintherapy.com. Mm -hmm. um, my practice name is New Day Vitality. Um, that's C-L-O-P-A-N-E therapy.com. Um, there's all my contact information there, all my services, all my specialty, including the Reiki. Mm -hmm. um, and I offer individual, couples, family, and group sessions. And your phone number for people who want to write it down. That's a good question. 914-715-0719. Uh, <laughs> okay. So if people uh, uh, didn't get a chance to get this information, this particular show sure. will be uh, archived on the web, as all of our shows are on the Internet. Uh, and you, Or you can ask for a special repeat of this broadcast. And I thank you, Colette, for being our guest tonight and hope that you can come back and talk about other topics. Thank you. It was an honor. You're welcome. We made it. There's more <laughs> live talk, uh, local live rather, coming up. I got the show name wrong. Uh, stay tuned. Mm -hmm.